Hello and welcome to CNN 10. My name is Carl Azus, but it's the name Michael that's making headlines today. It's a storm that formed in the Caribbean Sea on Sunday, lashed western Cuba as a Category 1 hurricane on Monday, and is expected to hit the U.S. Gulf Coast on Wednesday. This thing is moving quickly. It was entering the Gulf of Mexico as we produced this show. And while Michael's projected landfall in the U.S. is anywhere from Mobile, Alabama to northwestern Florida, the National Hurricane Center says wherever it strikes, life-threatening storm surge is possible, well-built homes could suffer major damage, roads could be blocked with fallen trees, and electricity and water may be unavailable for days or weeks in affected areas. States of emergency have been declared in Alabama and for dozens of Florida's counties. That makes it easier and faster to get help to people who need it. Florida's governor activated 500 National Guard troops to help with recovery. Mandatory evacuations have been ordered for some coastal areas, and college campuses have been closed from Tuesday through Friday. If this storm strengthens as it's expected to, and if it charges northeast across northern Florida and southern Georgia, Forecasters say it could cause additional problems for the parts of North and South Carolina that are trying to recover from Hurricane Florence. People working to clean up after that storm's flooding last month could see more rain. For now, though, one of the biggest questions surrounding Hurricane Michael is how powerful it's going to get. Well, this could make landfall as a major storm. It has intensified very quickly, and now that it's going to enter the Gulf of Mexico, it is going to intensify even more. It's entering very ripe conditions, uh, favorable for more intensification, possibly a Category 2, and then making landfall as a possible Category 3, a major storm. And then look at this track, possibly across the Carolinas once again. Of course, the model comparison, they're in a pretty good agreement. But there's one scenario, this red line, the GFS, that would be a worst case scenario. Because with this scenario, you're impacting more populated areas and you're getting the messy side of the storm across the Carolinas, which could bring a lot of rain. Now, this is going to be very different from Florence because this one is moving very, very very quickly, but still major concern when you have a Category 3 uh, making landfall across the panhandle. 10 second trivia. Where are you most likely to hear the terms arbitrage, jitney order, and put option? Would they be used in Brexit negotiations, the Pan-African Parliament, the stock market, or a cricket match? Since all of these are stock market terms, that's where you'll be most likely to hear them. Bulls and bears are also stock market symbols. Bull markets occur when investors are optimistic, buying increases and stock prices rise. Bear markets are when investors are pessimistic, selling increases and stock prices fall. According to Investopedia, it's believed that bull and bear markets got their names from the way these animals attack. Bulls push their horns upward, bears swipe their claws downward. That's one theory anyway. One thing we know for sure is that the U.S. stock market has been incredibly bullish. Investors don't know when this will end, but some are putting their guard up in case a bear shows up. Think of the stock market as a thermometer for the economy, but it's really a measure of how well companies are doing. And at the moment, they're killing it. Earnings in the first half of the year grew at the strongest pace in almost a decade. Those results are powering this bull market, now the longest in history. It turned 3,453 days old in August and has touched new highs since then. There's an old saying on Wall Street, bull markets don't die of old age. So what does kill a bull market? Well, a recession for starters. When the economy declines, so do corporate profits. And when the bottom line shrinks, stock prices usually follow. So is a recession coming? Well, the last one was in 2008, and some economists think America is overdue for another one. That's why economists are watching something called the yield curve so closely. It's the spread between short and long-term treasury rates, and it's flattening. If the yield curve inverts, that means short-term rates are higher than long-term rates, that's a warning sign. History tells us once the yield curve inverts, a U.S. recession is likely. Which brings me to another bull market killer, misplaying interest rates. The Federal Reserve has been raising rates since late 2015. Some economists fear if the Fed gets too aggressive, that could kill the bull. 
Then there's the black swan. It's the event you can't plan for, the shock that sends stocks plummeting, like a, a terror attack or the collapse of Lehman Brothers, an unpredictable crisis that can deliver a lethal blow to the bull. You know what else they say on Wall Street? That bull markets end with a whimper or a bang. We just don't know which one yet. As a child in China in the 1960s, Betty Quan Chin says her family was persecuted because her parents had religion and education. As an adult in Northwest California today, the Betty Quan Chin Homeless Foundation operates on faith, hope, love, and charity to help hundreds of people who endure some of the hardships Chin faced. She's a CNN hero. In China, my family is a target for the government. I separate from my family, and I live on the street by myself. I have wore a sign on my neck say I'm a child of the devil. This all happened when a young age. I had nothing to eat. Inside my heart, I don't want anybody to suffer what I suffer. I don't sleep a lot. I get up at 207, not 208, not 206. I tell myself, time to go. Somebody need your help. Homeless is serious everywhere, but in Humble County, it's a more problem. Every day, I go to 11 locations. See, look at all these people. Hello, how are you doing? Good. Hey, you? And then feed them. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And then ask them what they need, how I can help them. I haven't seen you for a while. So what are you doing now? No money, no job. They can come to us. We support them, change their life. You are good, okay? Tuesday, come to see me. This is a family shelter. They can stay here from six months to nine months. Food for free, live here for free. In that time, they have saved to rent a house or rent an apartment. Hello. Kid is my priority. When you want to end the homelessness, I had to from a kid. How your school, by the way? Good. Every day after 3 o'clock, we had kids come to us. So we had finished the homework and played the game, learn the manner. We call this Betty's Village. The village is built by shipping contender. Each one is 10 by 10. Very basic, emergency shelter. I provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner for them. I have mobile medical come in. Being on the streets, you can't get a job if you don't have an ID or a social security card, so she helps you get a new one. Since I came here, I got a job, and everything changed from there. She really believes in every person. Like, you truly see it. People just caught on. Her lovability, her friendship. She stepped to her work, and she's still here, and still doing her job. She actually is able to provide more service than we are as the county. Betty fills the gap. Some people, they don't like me because they just think I create a homeless issue. They yell at me, scream at me, they spit at me. They just say, go better where you come from. You take your bow back. Sometimes I just go to the beach and sit down there. I had to unload my emotion. We do have an opening for you. Oh, really? So you can move in, in today. Americans are very kind to me, very kind. When I come to this country, I had $20. Every penny I met, I donate to this charity. Everything going back to help the people. I have more than what I need. Yesterday, we reported on the return of three space travelers to planet Earth. Today, we're bringing you a glimpse of a music video that one of them recorded while he was on the International Space Station. Though the orbiter itself covers about the same space as a football field, the areas where people can actually go and record videos like this are more limited. But while there may not be a lot of space to film, the view is incredible. I think that tops Upside Down and Inside Out by OK Go. The video is a saddle light-hearted take on a space experiment, and it's sure to ascend to the top of the charts. Is it in the top 10? No, it's in orbit. It rocketed up there and launched the astronaut into stardom. I'm Carl Azus, and NASA all the time we have on CNN 10.